Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to clear up some uh, misconceptions about genetics and bodybuilding. Um, what exists and what doesn't. So first off, it is a genetic sport at some point. <clears throat> Once you have put on just as much muscle as you can and you peeled the fat away uh, to the greatest extent possible, it's super, super low body fat, <clears throat> it does become about what you've just got genetically, what you've got naturally. Um, that said, you can certainly develop it quite a bit. Um, you know, you can really do a lot. You can target specific muscles. And it really comes down to just time in the saddle. How many years have you been training consistently um, to develop them? <laughs> and are you doing it right? So it's not meant to be discouraging. Um, but at, at some point, it, it just is genetic too. I could never just look exactly like a Mr. Olympia competitor because, you know, there are a lot of different aspects to it. The muscle tie-ins, the lines you've got, just the ratios you've kind of got, um, how much mass you can keep on your frame, um, <clears throat> the muscle bellies underneath, like do you have a long or short bicep? Uh, how low do your lats drop, how high are your calves, those kind of things. And and uh, that kind of, it, it just sort of is what it is. Um, <clears throat> some of those things are just not going to be able to change. And this leads into um, a really common misconception among beginners, and that's about your abs. Like, uh, hey, an eight-pack is better than a six-pack six pack better than a four pack you know you're just born with what you have and you can develop the ab muscles you can make them stronger make them bigger and protrude more and obviously you need to lose enough fat to reveal them <clears throat> but you know some people's line up some people's don't some people have a natural you know eight pack some people have a six pack some people have a two pack four pack um some don't even look like a pack. I've seen really skinny, weird-looking six-packs before. You know, ones with, with big gap between the muscles. Um, so that just kind of is what it is. You're not going to just add on abs. I've seen, I've seen the, like a 10-pack before. Um, and, you know, I don't have that. Um, I, can't, I can't get that. So that, that's one of those genetic situations where that's just what you've got um, another thing is um, you know your body type are you an ectomorph or an endomorph or a mesomorph I think we all want to be mesomorphs um, <clears throat> and I think you kind of can change that um, like I, I was never just a fat kid a fat guy didn't it wasn't really easy for me to pack on a lot but I was always kind of a mesomorph it wasn't wasn't difficult to put on muscle but um, it wasn't difficult to lose fat either I, I could pretty much just eat what I wanted and I'm happy for that <laughs> but um, I think you can kind of change because I used to be just a lot skinnier I had uh, less less body mass in general less muscle so over the course of you know many years of compounded lifting, uh, your body, you know, hangs on to it. It becomes the new normal, the new set normal, and after enough time, then the body recognizes that as normal. If you just blow up and then stop lifting, you're not you're not gonna keep that weight. But if you just progress, keep the weights heavy, you know, keep progressing in the gym, whether it's more, more reps, more weight, whatever, um, then it just becomes easy. Like right now, you know, I, when I was younger, I couldn't have imagined being like sub 5% body fat at 200 pounds, but now that is where I am. And it's really, really, really hard for me to drop under 200 pounds. It's really not going to happen. My last contest, I lost as much water and fat as I possibly could, and I was still 200. <clears throat> a little over. Um, and so... It, it does become something that your body adapts to. So, uh, you know, if you're skinny, don't be discouraged because you just have to eat 
and eat and eat and train and just keep it up. And um, also, you know, if you're on the fatter side, you can sure do a ton to lose weight, obviously. You see the crazy transformations people have. You lose a few hundred pounds. So um, I think you kind of can change that. And I think you can change your metabolism. There's a lot you can do to turn up the furnace and burn more fat. So many things. I should make a video on just ways to boost your metabolism. Um, but in that way, I do believe that you're changing yourself from an ecto or an endomorph into a mesomorph. So, um, that's just, that's a little bit about it. Um, you know, you get to a point and it, it just, it's an unfair sport at the very, very top of your game. If you're literally, you know, you're going to compete in the Olympia, you kind of just look like what you look like. You put on as much muscle as possible. You've developed your muscles as much as, as possible, really, you know, without just minor changes. But if you've been training for 10 years every day it's kind of where you are um, you know you can always you can always add a little more okay so I'm not trying to put a ceiling on it because I don't believe in that either uh, every year I always think I'm getting close but I add more um, so um, that's just kind of some accurate information to work with because I think it helps to know the real truth and that can uh, change your expectations, and it can train the, your methodology, how you train and how you eat. Um, yeah, and just, just what you can expect to accomplish. So there are some of those things, the muscle bellies, <laughs> they are what they are. Um, but, but you can certainly do quite a bit to develop them. And listen, I really believe that 90-some percent of people walking around can look just fantastic. Um you can have a, a great, great body. It's not always uh, much much you can do about your face or something like that, but you can definitely have a really good body, and uh, it's just a matter of hard work. So that's, I think, really encouraging. And the difference between anybody at the top of their game and somebody who's literally a stage competitor is not a perception that the layperson really would uh, perceive. It's it's only something that like a really trained eye would notice because you look at some of those people and it, it kind of boils down to subjectivity almost at some point. But um, they're very, very minute differences. And um, it's just, you know, it comes down to your, your balance and your perfect symmetry and that kind of thing. And, you know, you don't need that to be looking really awesome on the beach. So there's a little bit for you. Um, please feel free to leave some comments if you've got questions. And, um, yeah, again, I think I will do a, a video soon about um, ways to speed up your metabolism. All right.